I love everything about this place. Wow, welcome to my home. <laughs> Come again. <laughs> We're going to the Rialto food market. Well, the Rialto bridge, you can actually see it from the apartment. So it's that way. Every single time I walk down this alleyway, I have the certain knowledge that I am about to get hideously lost. So tell me about this coat, Stephanie. Hello. I made the coat. You made the coat. Yeah, well, I knew exactly what I wanted and I couldn't find it anywhere. Yeah. I wanted a sort of tapestry coat, so I made it. <laughs> we have seriously stepped into a fairy tale. This is unbelievable. <laughs> you have no idea where we're going, do you? Here. Here. Going? This way. <laughs> Look at the colour of the water. It's it's green. I think they dye the water for the tourists. <laughs> What's wrong, Steph? I'm completely, but completely lost. Okay. But completely lost. Let's try this one. Well, we may be completely lost, but we have found a view of our palace on the Grand Canal. Palazzo Mossenigo is made up of three palazzos in a row and they all belong to the Mossenigo family who produced several of the doges of Venice. All of the top floor square windows are our apartment and we're living next door to the part of Palazzo Mossenigo which Byron rented when he lived in Venice. He fell completely in love with the city, writing, I saw from out the wave her structures rise as from the stroke of the enchanter's wand. And I couldn't have put it better myself, which is not surprising because I'm not Byron. This is an engraving of him in his apartment of the Palazzo. He must have been a bit of a nightmare tenant because apparently he moved in with several birds, dogs, a wolf, a fox and two monkeys. Oh, this is pleasant. <laughs> wow. Well, now I'm not lost anymore because I can see the Rialto There's bridge. the Rialto Bridge. How about seafood pasta tonight? Okay, that sounds amazing. Okay, we'll make that. And I can see a big bag of plants right there. Just there. You got it. Two kilos of clams. Two kilos of clams. Wow. Look. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you getting, Steph? I'm getting flowers. Yeah, that's flowers. Thing, I this. I love sun-dried tomatoes, so we're going to have to get some. And now we're going to the Parmesan shop. Whoa. It's a popular place. <laughs> this is my favourite sort of shop and it is whetting my appetite for breakfast. Are you enjoying that spritz, Stephanie? So much. Yeah? Breakfast is liquid except for an olive. <laughs> Make sure you eat that olive because it was expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful sunny day in Venice. Stephanie is taking me on an adventure. Apparently we're going somewhere quite special. We're going to Murano. Murano? Yes, let's look at some chandeliers. Oh, I do love a good chandelier. Oh. <laughs> no idea where we're going. There's so many little back streets in Venice. We never have any idea where we're going. Oh, we're going You're enjoying our little boat trip. It's marvellous. I can't believe how beautiful it is out on the water. As you glide past a cemetery. During the French occupation, Napoleon decided that it was unsanitary to bury people in Venice itself. So since then, this island has been the cemetery for Venice. So we're just arriving at Murano. I hear this is Murano. This is it. Let's find chandeliers and glasses. We can get some inspiration as well. We're going to start off by visiting the showroom of a glass manufacturer. Is it right to want to buy a chandelier because it matches my dress? I wonder if that's a bit frivolous. I don't see the problem in that. I just love it. Look, it's so colourful. I'm amazing in the dining room. Actually, at Georges Saint's Chateau, where she lived with Chopin, just 20 minutes from us at La Lande, um, there are lots of amazing Venetian chandeliers. 
because she ran away from her husband with her lover, the poet de Musset, and she came to Venice with him, and she bought lots of chandeliers and took them back. So I need to do the same thing. Have you spotted what you want? I have spotted exactly what I want. I really love this red glass, and I think it's absolutely stunning. How can a man survive without a massive glass goblet? <laughs> Something to drink from now. Um, <laughs> Is that what you're going to do with that? No, no. Feeling I thirsty? I wouldn't touch it. <laughs> it would just look really pretty, sat somewhere. Look at the birds, they're so cute. They are absolutely stunning. I like the two yellow ones. Looking at each other, longingly. <laughs> Very cheerfully, one's got a really cheerful expression. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? Mummy! <laughs> I don't want this mirror. Oh, it's so beautiful though. <laughs> Just like mummy. It's not giving me the right answers. Steph, have you found the way we're meant to be going? Well, I found the glass museum. You found it? Yeah, it's Let's have a look. Too small. Too small. This, this is the sort of size that's better. Okay. I, I think at doing it. I think your ceilings are a little bit low for these ones, though, don't you? I think that that chandelier would actually not fit, even if it was touching the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Just walk around it. <laughs> Step around the chandelier. <laughs> Whereas if they're in the kitchen at La Land, I would give them a life of about a month max. <laughs> How are they still okay? They've I, obviously been uh, they've obviously been loved very much. I think it's because it's not Andreas who's responsible <laughs> for the washing up. What, what's what's got you so excited? What I need for the dining room. Well, let me see. It's a garden. A garden? How have we lived without this all our lives? A glass garden. It's actually very practical because you don't need a mower and there's no moles. <laughs> Table centrepieces like this were incredibly popular in the 18th century. The Doge himself would have had similar decorations on his tables. This one is a garden, but many of them were historical or mythological scenes made by the manufacturer Giuseppe Briatti. found somewhere else that you like. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of a doer-upper for us. Come on, this is up our street. We can do this. It needs a lot of work, but... So did Lalande and Bamanier. Well, yeah, well, you're right, actually, yeah. <laughs> Let's tackle that. Can you see yourself living there? Once it's done, yes. Yeah? We're on our way to visit the Basilica of Santa Maria e San Donato, which is one of the oldest churches in the Venetian Lagoon, originally dating from the 7th century. Here we are at the Basilica. And we're going to go and see the 12th century mosaic floor. Dating from 1141, the mosaic floor is made of porphyry, serpentine, marble and precious stones. The floor is full of Christian imagery and as soon as you come in, you see peacocks, which makes me feel very much at home. Peacocks are a symbol of immortality and the goblet that they're eating from symbolises divine grace. So this shows that you can get immortality through divine grace. Another mosaic that really reminds me of Lalande are the two roosters carrying a fox. They're showing the triumph of vigilance over cunning. And I wish that our roosters could be that vigilant. While I'm here, I'm going to light a candle for my father, even though he was completely atheist. It seems the right way to remember him as we came here together 20 years ago and he bought me a beautiful chandelier that's now hanging in Lalande and makes me so happy. Not a day goes by when I don't miss him. Now this is so beautiful. Thank you for inviting me. As the sun sets on Murano, it's time for us to get back to Venice to make our spaghetti alle vongole. Spaghetti alle vongole with all the lovely 
everything to go to the market. Oh. So I'm about to cook the clam. Spaghetti is already on it. It's a special bigoli, which is really, really thick pasta. Um, and I've got the artichoke hearts very slowly steaming and cooking in butter. We've got parsley look. for those. Oh, wow. They look really good. I'm getting so hungry just smelling the garlic and looking at everything. And also, have you seen the size of the parmesan I bought? No. Which I has gone not. down substantially since so, I got home. It's a lot bigger when you <laughs> yeah. bought it today. There seems to be lots of there? little nibbly bits missing. Do you know about uh, this? I don't think it would have been right to cook with that without having checked it. So check. a few you of to us check. did check yeah. it a couple of times and you we do agree it's that it's very suitable. <laughs> Did you get a bit, uh, little bit damp out? Yeah, um, I got lost trying to find the supermarket. And what was this emergency run you had to leave in the evening for? Um, well, we've got gin, but no tonic. Mm. And that is definitely an emergency. So I, I could not go because obviously um, the alarms have just gone off and it means it's going to flood tonight. So I can't go out later. So I had to go out now. Spaghetti alle vongole are ready. And the artichoke hearts with butter and parmesan and lemon. Oh, and there's the flowers that we got in the market. The dreaded day has finally arrived when it's time to leave Venice. Michael and cousin Gillian have already left, and I'm off to the airport with David and Donna. Bye bye, Palazzo Mossinigo. Staying in you was a complete joy, even though we didn't have any wolves, foxes, or monkeys. I so don't want to leave this city. The only thing keeping me going is the thought that tonight I'll see Marie and I'll be back in my bed in La Lande. What are we going to miss the most? I'm going to miss getting up and having eggs for breakfast on the balcony looking all over Venice. Spritz. Oh, spritz <laughs> every night. I'm going to miss whiskey looking out through the window at the night over the Grand Canal. <laughs> Look at the sun, look at the people, look at the boats, the water. The only problem is that we're going home. Admittedly, it's not a bad way to arrive at an airport. such beautiful weather back home at La Lande. This is not bad to wake up to at all. Well, this is a very beautiful look. <laughs> Thank you. This is my new look. Every day? Yes. That's rather glorious. I think I look quite amazing. You do? It's very sad not to be in Venice anymore, but at least I have reminders of the city all over this house. And one of my favourites lives inside the Winter Salon. I bought this hat a couple of years ago in Venice for Carnival. This is why I couldn't justify buying another hat. And now I'm going to take you to see the chandelier that my father bought for me about 20 years ago in Murano. Here we are at the Chambre de Roger, which I think of as the Venetian room. And there it is. It fills me with such happy memories. Okay, I admit it. It's good to be home. Mm -hmm. 